All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Portland. It's been about a year since our last visit. This time we're here for some food, beer, and fun Northwest style. So let's do stuff. That's Lucas. We're on a quest for new adventures and great food. Come along with us as we explore our incredible world. Real quick, if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss any of our adventures. And now, let's grab some brunch. We are at my favorite brunch spot in Portland. It's called the Tin Shed. And this that I'm eating in front of me is called the Good Dog. They kind of have a dog focus on their decor and their theme. And they're very dog friendly. We had a beautiful corgi in here earlier. It is potato cakes, scrambled eggs, bell peppers, jalapenos, salsa, veggie sausage, cheese, and a chipotle drizzle with a buttermilk biscuit that they make here, house made jam, Just couldn't ask for anything more. It's the perfect breakfast. More than eight miles long, one mile wide, and covering over 5,200 acres, Forest Park is one of the largest urban forest reserves in the country. It offers panoramic views of the city of Portland, the Willamette and Columbia Rivers, and five major peaks of the Cascade Range. began in 1903 when the Olmsted brothers, sons of the designer of Central Park, helped avoid this area turning into a large-scale residential development. Forest Park is an exceptional place right here in the middle of downtown Portland, an opportunity to relax, restore, and learn. tree fell over at some point and then just decided it wanted to still live and now it's doing this fascinating twist thing and trying to survive, eke out a life here at the forest floor. It's awesome. What a beautiful trail. We are on the Wildwood Trail in Forest Park that starts at Pittock Mansion. And while it's about 30 miles long, if you want to take the entire thing, obviously we didn't do the whole 30 miles. I think we did about two to three today. But know before you go that the fun part is at the beginning. It's all downhill on the way out. And then uh, you, there's some forks in the road. You can go many different ways, but you're gonna have to go back up on the way back up and that's a lot of fun mm -hmm. so yeah it's just gorgeous here mosses and ferns and mushrooms everywhere so beautiful yeah but now it's off to dinner yeah. with 14 carts featuring cuisines from all around the world piedmont station on northeast killingsworth ranks among our favorites of Portland's many food pods. There's plenty of seating, both covered and uncovered, and even a beer cart with 12 taps. That was a wonderful hike, and I am starving, and so one of the things we got here is the 
Portlandia burrito from Roland Fresh, which calls itself the sushi burrito of the Northwest. It's got fresh salmon, cream cheese, ginger guac, and several other things. And it looks fantastic. It looks like just a giant sushi roll. Dude, that is like all the things you love about a Philadelphia roll on steroids and just enhanced. It was a fantastic idea. I wholeheartedly endorse it. When I heard that Portland had an Egyptian coffee shop and a double-decker bus, it was pretty obvious we were coming here. We're at Tove Coffee on Hawthorne, and downstairs is the coffee bar, upstairs is seating. They've got traditional espresso drinks, and also what they're calling original favorites that are Egyptian-inspired drinks with house-made syrups. So let's go check it out and get a drink. The Nectar of the Gods, which is a latte with house-made caramel and cardamom-infused coffee. And we're going to give this a try. Mm. The caramel is the first thing you taste and it really complements those notes on the coffee that are kind of bitter, kind of balances everything out. And the cardamom is really good, it's a little bit subtle in the background there, not too forward. I was afraid it was gonna to be too sweet, but it's not. It's just balanced, delicious, creamy. So, so good. We also got two of their mint things to go. It's a cold brew with oat milk and sugar and mint. So we're excited to try that with breakfast tomorrow. near Pioneer Square, about to go under a hotel, past this pirate, to an underground entertainment center. There's also axe throwing and an escape room, but we're here for Glowing Greens, the underground glow-in-the-dark miniature golf. So let's go check it out. A few moments later. All right, Tara, what happened? <laughs> well, be aware that Glowing Greens Portland is very popular, so you should probably book in advance online. We came here and they are sold out for the entire rest of the day, so we booked for tomorrow. The next day. All right, we have returned to try this one more time. Online booking is secured. Let's go golf. We've made it underground for this glow-in-the-dark 3D pirate round of our ongoing golf tournament. So let's go.
won. Well, I won. It's it over. A, it was I a won. I don't even know what the hole. score is, but I was up by quite a bit. And yeah, this hole is dubious at best. Sloped. You can't see. It's super dark in here. And it's sloped. Puts you in this corner. Everybody ended up in this corner. But it was fun. 13 holes. I was expecting 18. That was kind of an unpleasant surprise when we got to 13. It was the last hole. But uh, it's fun in here. We had a good time. And the decor is the draw. The decor is phenomenal. The holes aren't that challenging. They're kind of fun. There's not a lot of slopes, I think, probably because it's really dark. But uh, overall, I'd say you know, 7 out of 10. Pretty fun, unique round. So Portland is known for many things. Beer is pretty high up on that list. And tonight, we're going to take you to a few Portland's breweries. So let's do it. Portland's craft beer scene boasts many world-class breweries, and it consistently ranks among the best cities for beer year after year. We visited six during this visit, including Gigantic, Bear Lick, Culmination, and Great Notion, and we enjoyed all of them, but the two standouts for me were the following. All right, y'all, stop number one is Hair of the Dog Brewing here in Southeast Portland. And this place is kind of legendary. They opened in 93, and they are one of the original pioneers of craft beer. Um, and we were very sad to learn recently that uh, they made an announcement that they're going to wrap things up here in the summer of 2022. So we were coming to Portland. We knew we had to pay homage to a legend and swing by one last time. The beer I'm drinking is called Fred, and this version is aged in chocolate rye barrels. It is an American strong ale uh, at 12% ABV. Quite pale for that style. Big boozy nose up front. A lot of rye whiskey on the nose. Oak. It's delightful. Some caramel, maybe even like honey. Definitely a little bit of whiskey in there, but uh, very malty for as pale as it is. It's pretty sweet, but not uh, overwhelmingly sweet. I mean, this is exactly the type of beer that put this place on the map. And I've already used the word legendary, and I'm gonna say it again. This place is pretty legendary, and I'm very happy to be back here one last time. Cheers. And now, from an old school pioneer to a brewery on the leading edge of the modern craft beer movement. All right, y'all, our next stop is Ruse Brewing here in Southeast Portland. And they are making a name for themselves for sure. And they have a bunch of hazy New England style IPAs. And the beer I'm drinking today just happens to be one of them. It is called Mystic Visions. It is a 7.3% ABV hazy IPA. It says here, uh, loaded up with Strata, Eldorado, and Mosaic Hops. Definitely hazy. Nice little white head. Very tropical. That is delectable. So a lot of tropical fruit going on, but in, in particular, I'd go with pineapple. It's a nice malt backbone there. It's not too sweet. Nice creamy mouthfeel. This is a fantastic hazy idea. Excellent. You know, I've only spent about 15 minutes in this place and I already like it a ton. This morning we went to Pip's Donuts and they make each batch of donuts to order. So the donuts are fresh and hot out of the oil when you get them. So there is a little bit of a wait. We waited about 30 minutes or so, but once you place your order, it's pretty quick. We got a variety of donuts. We asked for four of each kind, and so we could share with the family here. They're very small donuts. They're mini donuts. So you can definitely have four or five per person. 
we got all of the flavors that they had on the board today. The seasonal was banana custard. They also had maple bacon, cinnamon sugar, sea salt and raw honey, and the Reggie, which is cinnamon sugar and Nutella. Which one are you gonna choose? Uh, I think I'll do the Reggie. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. Delicious fresh fried baby donuts. They're awful. We hate them. Oh my god. That is decadent. So sweet. It's just covered in sugar on the outside along with Nutella. And there's some uh, this honey. What is mm -hmm. this? Is that on there? Yep. And there's honey on there. <laughs> They're just fried perfectly. That is decadent and fantastic. I'm going to do the banana custard. It's just a perfectly fried, crispy, delicious, light. Mm. The banana custard's not too sweet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we never do donuts at home, so this is a decadent <laughs> treat and wow. Mm -hmm. Totally worth, worth waiting. Wait. Yeah, worth waiting a half hour. For our final meal before we head out of town, we're here at Radio Room. It's a really cute mid-century cocktail bar and restaurant inside of a restored Art Deco building from 1949. The patio is really nice. They've got a fire pit and heaters. I got some breakfast tacos this morning. Everything looks really good. These tacos have eggs, cheese, seasonal vegetables, chorizo, and hot sauce. That is so good. The roasted vegetables and the eggs and the chorizo, everything just like melds together in a perfect breakfast bite. So, so good. Thank you so much for coming along with us on this delicious tour of Portland. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up or drop us a comment down below. If you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our adventures. Thanks and we'll see you in the next one.